When I first read this story about Brooke Sherman, I immediately imagined an alternate timeline 11 years ago in which I got completely screwed. Not because I queried Brooks, because I didn't. I don't even think he was an agent back then, but because this stuff he's been accused of, no longer agenting ethically, having a pattern of deceiving clients regarding submissions and foreign rights, denigrating authors to other authors and to editors, and more, see the YA Whispers Twitter account if you want more details, I'll link all of this in the description below. All that stuff, I've heard it before of other agents. Because Brooks is a well-known agent with high-profile clients like Angie Thomas and Becky Abertelli, this story made big headlines in the book world. But he's certainly not the first, and he's definitely not the only agent that I know of who has pulled stuff like this. One of my friends and critique partners went through this exact same thing years ago. She signed with an agent, they revised her book, they went on submission, and then slowly, very gradually, her agent ghosted her. And not just via email, in person. My friend actually planned a trip to New York and had scheduled a date, a coffee date, with her agent, and the agent didn't show up, never texted, never said anything about it, never even apologized after the fact. Then, after six months of being on submission, my friend learned via a Facebook post <laughs> that her agent was leaving agenting. There was zero direct communication with the clients. In fact, the Facebook post itself was not written by the agent, but by someone else on behalf of the agent. Others at the agency scrambled. They were just as caught off guard as the clients were, and they were scrambling to find information and to answer the onslaught of phone calls and emails they were getting from her clients who, you know, had very valid questions about what was going on. After about a week of pressing the agency to find her submission list, my friend learned that her agent had never sent her out on submission at all. Six months, y'all. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I'm still mad about it. So yeah, when I see stories like this one about Brooks, I immediately see an alternate timeline in which my agent that I signed with is not and was not the ethical, communicative, wonderful person that she is, but one of those agents. And honestly, looking back at my very first query list, there's a few names on there that, well, the phrase dodged a bullet comes to mind. And what scares me is that I remember exactly how it felt when I got an agent. I felt lucky. Lucky. No. Getting an offer of representation often gets compared to winning the lottery because so many people are playing the query game and there can only be a few winners. But when you get an agent, it's not because of luck. No one plucked you from obscurity. Thank you, Publishers Weekly, for retracting that nonsense. You wrote a book and an agent thought it had potential to sell. You earned representation. Your agent is not doing you a favor. She is not your employer, nor is she your employee. You are in a partnership in which you will both profit if she can sell your book. But even though I knew that here back then, I didn't feel it here and I certainly didn't act like it. I was terrified to ask my agent anything that I felt was like, overstepping, and to me everything was overstepping. And this was despite her having a very open, warm, and encouraging personality. If she had ghosted me, I probably would have gone months before working up the courage to check in with an email, and I would have made excuses for her. I would have accepted everything she said at face value, and I would never have questioned her on anything, because I felt lucky to have an agent, and back then, having even a terrible agent would have felt better than having no agent at all. But no, learning that for the last six months you've been stressing and hoping to get a phone call or an email with the offer every day because editors are reading your book, and then learning that nope, that never happened, that is far, far worse. That said, every time I do a video about traditional publishing, it tends to get dark. And then I get comments from a lot of you guys who are like feeling that the whole thing is just bleak and not worth pursuing. And you know, there's a lot of good here and I want you to feel encouraged to go out and pursue this if that's what you want. And in this case, there are so, so many wonderful, 
ethical agents who are great at their jobs and are going to be huge advocates for you and your book. And I want you to find one of those. So now let's talk about querying. Now, if you're here looking for advice on how to write a query letter, I've got a separate video on that and I'll link to it in the description below. It's got a query formula. It'll really help you very quickly boil down your big giant story into just a few sentences. And if you're looking for more about like what agents like and what they don't like, I've got another video on that and I'll link it down below as well. But right now I wanna talk about the ways I have seen authors self-sabotage during the query process. First up, writing the query like an ad. I understand how you might make this mistake. The author might think, oh, I have to sell this book. And it turns on that inner salesman and they end up writing a query that's not quite in their own POV. It's as if they're pretending to be somebody else describing the story and giving it a rave review. It's kind of a show don't tell issue. Your pitch, your actual description of your story should speak for itself. That's what sells. Don't tell the agent that your book is important gut-wrenching, brilliantly plotted with a stunning twist and witty dialogue and proven to kill 99% of bacteria. This is a query letter, not a commercial for hand sanitizer. Next up, querying before the book is ready. And when I say ready, I don't just mean written, I mean written and revised and polished done. I remember when I was a few chapters away from having a finished draft of my second novel, I had queried my first novel to like over a hundred agents and had zero interest. But I knew this book was better and I was really excited because I thought it had a chance. I had put together a list of agents for my first round, but I was committed to finishing the draft, to getting my beta readers to go through it, to revising it. Then one of the agents on my list, who I was of course stalking on Twitter, announced some sort of query contest. I can't remember the details, but she was basically like, this weekend, submit your queries to this special contest email address, and I'm going to publicly critique a few of them, and if I see anything I like, I just might make an offer. And boy, I stuck my foot out over that ledge. I spent like two straight days doing nothing but polishing my query like mad. I completely abandoning my draft in the process because this felt like serendipity. I was going to enter this contest justifying it by telling myself, oh, maybe I'll get feedback on my query from an agent before I actually start querying. But y'all know deep down, I was hoping she was gonna read my query and just be so blown away that she offered representation. <sniffs> offered on what, my unfinished book? Luckily, one of my critique partners talked me back from that ledge and I didn't enter. It's so tempting when you've been working at this for years and you feel like you're so close and being agented is within reach, but my book was not ready. And I am so grateful to the critique partner who made me realize that. I gotta tell you guys, I get requests um, from potential ghostwriting clients and the short version is basically that they had an idea for a book, they sort of wrote some of the draft, then they got excited, they wrote a query, they decided to test the waters and send the query out and now they have a full manuscript request from an agent and they would like to know how fast could I write this for them and how much would it cost? Don't do that to yourself and don't do that to your story. The agents will be there when it's ready. This next one is adjacent to that. Spending more time on the query than the book. Those folks who kind of frantically contact me looking for someone to very quickly ghostwrite their book, they're the perfect example. They thought that their idea was awesome enough to grab an agent's attention and they were right, but agents don't put ideas on submission. They put books on submission. Write the book, revise the book, do your idea justice. Next up, following up to a rejection from an agent with anything other than thank you for your time. I mean, if the agent gave you really helpful personalized feedback, then of course it's okay to go into a little more detail with them. But please, oh please, don't make passive aggressive threats or aggressive threats, obviously. It's kind of amazing how many agents hear some variation of, when this book sells a million copies, you'll be sorry. This is self-sabotage because not only have you burned that bridge with that agent, you've burned bridges with however many other agents that agent talks to and agents talk. Relatedly, 
following up to a rejection by pitching another book. And to be clear, I mean immediately following up. Of course, later down the line, after you've revised and polished another book, it's perfectly fine to query the same agent. But to do it immediately sends the pretty clear message that you are throwing stuff against the wall to see what sticks. Also, again, agents sell books, not ideas, and I'm just not convinced that a lot of writers have two completely polished manuscripts at the ready, and they're just querying one and letting this other one sit here. Lastly, to bring this around full circle, when you do get an offer of representation, ask questions. Don't forget to be an advocate for yourself and your book. Questions to ask might include, what kinds of edits do you think my book needs before it's ready to go on submission? Do you have any editors or houses in mind? How often do you communicate with authors during submission? Questions not to ask include, how big do you think my advance will be? Do you think this has a chance of being a New York Times bestseller? Do you think I'll get a movie deal? Remember, these are agents, not fortune tellers. Ask for facts, not predictions. That's it. Check the description for links to my other agent and query related videos. If you found this one helpful, I'd appreciate it if you hit that like button and I'll see you guys later this week with another video. Bye.